171st contact. Tuesday, April 6, 1982, 11.03 p.m. Billy says I thought that you really wouldn't come again for the next six months. Quetzal says that is so planned and is how it should be. But the reason why I once again get in touch with you today despite what I told you on Sunday during our conversation about what is to occur for the next six months, other than with personal assistance for you in relation to your mission is because I still have to give you some instructions and explanations that we prepared yesterday. So today, I come to you again, despite everything in order to explain that I will, of course, be immediately accessible to you when most urgent situations require it, but such may have no connection with any matters pertaining to the group or group members in a direct or indirect way. This is also true for matters that concern you personally. For this reason, each of us will first clarify what motives exist in you before we get involved in calls of yours. But to this end, it is now necessary that at such times, you interrupt your thought blockade so that we can explore your thoughts because by this blockade, you have made your thoughts untouchable even for us. Billy says of course, I submit myself to your arrangement. Quetzal says that is important to us because we cannot get involved in anything that would go against our determinations. Billy says that's understandable. Quetzal says in addition, the group members also have to understand that we cannot continue to exercise patience and forbearance and no further exceptions can be made in any way or form not even in ways that certain group members, except HANA, can be kept away from regular duties. This refers to all learning activities as well as all manual activities, etc. Furthermore, you have to follow the determination that we prepared which is that you carry out our toughest demands in regards to exclusions and that you exclude a group member immediately from the core group for good even if only one word points to the possibility of a disregard of the imposed duties of the group member concerned. Thus, by all power, the chaff will be separated from the grain, and moreover, failures will actually appear, so you will have to do this in your impartial manner and on our behalf. In addition, the task is imposed upon you to pursue all necessary teachings with the group members to a very great degree and to work through specific subjects, as I will still mentally convey these to you continuously. But what applies first and foremost is working through the law of love, but also the subjects of rectification, balance and equality. Concerning this, you also have to develop appropriate measures that must be introduced and be implemented throughout the whole group. However, you have to prepare the necessary appearance of this from your own point of view and according to your own discretion. Nevertheless, it is strongly suggested to you that you neither carry out any of these measures nor mention them to the group members before you have consulted me about this on a telepathic basis, after which I will then submit the relevant matters to my colleagues and to the High Council, in order to come to a final and collective decision with them about whether your judgments are of superior logic and are, thus, appropriate. Thus the right is taken away from you to give any instructions from your own power, even in the smallest cases, because in the most severe form, even you have acted incorrectly in reference to the fulfillment of the conditions that were placed on the group members by us. As the leading person, you've received from us the obligation to shape the group members into an elite, but such duty you have not met. You were too soft and yielding, which must now change, however. This is now the last possible time, when every single group member must decide whether he further wants to live only in his personal egoism or whether the fulfillment of the mission and, thus, his own personal responsibility is more important to him. This is why you have to prepare appropriate tough measures, which you will have to implement if we ask you to do so. However, we do this only after a thorough examination of your proposed measure while even your right to make and carry out decisions, without these first being recognized by us as logically correct and being approved for implementation, is denied. This applies to all areas of your duties, such as to acquisitions, to reorganizations and changes of plan, etc., such as to times for work and hours of work, and also to watch duties, 
lectures, preparations of writings, reports, and so on. Billy says so I have, in no way, a freedom of choice and freedom of action. Quetzal says of those, you are actually denied, in a general sense. Your wrong actions have forced us to do so. You have neglected your duties to all group members in the crudest form because you were not mindful to form, to receive, and to carry out the necessary order and everything else. Billy says I know that I am responsible for ensuring that all group members always do the right thing, that they think correctly and learn to act and that they understand everything correctly. But unfortunately, I have failed in this. Quetzal says that is correct, and that's why we must now take these measures. But you must not speak of this for so long in your group, until I bring you, on the 4th of October, our decision about whether we would continue the contacts and along with this, the fulfillment of the mission or whether we implement the last and completely silent two-year period, which then means that with certainty, the mission will be terminated. And since you have committed the most serious, neglectful errors, you will not even be allowed to tell the group members that you no longer have the power of decision or rights of implementation in regards to new and drastic measures to be carried out. Instead, the group members should be of the view that you make these arrangements but not that you just work out what is necessary, while we, nevertheless, determine whether you will then implement these measures or not. The reason for this is that the group members, on the one hand, must learn to think for themselves and to decide, while on the other hand, they also dare to share their own thoughts and views even if these will often be wrong in general. If they were well acquainted with the truth, that the arrangements only come from us alone and any decision lies with us alone, then they would automatically decide for this in each case and act according to the given pieces of advice and regulations because paradoxically, they know very well that we have placed the six-month term into effect, but they only take this seriously on the outward appearance, yet they still haven't recognized the full truth of this ultimatum and don't take it seriously. Nevertheless, they would, at once, follow all reforms and arrangements if they knew that we alone prescribe them, while you just work out the necessities. They would do this in such a way because they want to fulfill the regulations outwardly, and they think that they can deceive us and you. But if they would now be of the wrong view that you alone would give the orders, then they will present themselves as they truly are in their selfish interiors, whereby it will be very easy for us to perform the necessary analysis. Billy says then once again, I'm back to being the evil rascal. Quetzal says unfortunately, it must be so. Billy says and how long do I have to wait in each case for a decision to conduct an operation, if I have developed such and have sent it to you for review, before I either receive your refusal or your order for implementation? Quetzal says a maximum of three hours, because for this purpose, we have formed a crisis committee since the time hurries and you must be able to act as quickly as possible. Billy says at least something. But this is damn difficult if I can't at least talk about this with someone. Quetzal says we have also thought of that, so we decided that you may initiate Engelbert into these matters if you need his help. But he also must promise to be silent about this, even to his family. Billy says but that will create trouble for him. Quetzal says that will be true with a very high probability, unfortunately. Billy says this won't please him, however. Quetzal says that is correct, but he, like everyone else, now has to decide whether the fulfillment of his destiny and the fulfillment of the mission are more important to him than possible disagreements that can and will fall upon him. Billy says once again, you know more than me. Quetzal says he, too will slowly encounter the pain and trouble in greater measures when he finally decides for the fulfillment of his destiny and for the fulfillment of the mission. And you also will encounter new psychological distress and many other burdens regarding the soon expansion of your family, as this will also be the case with Engelbert in the foreseeable future, as you know. Billy says unfortunately, I only too often think of such coming trouble, and then, it annoys me even more. But to change, it is not. 
Quetzal says and neither will many other things that are still to arrive in the coming time. Thus, you will also soon suffer need for your wife again. Billy says oh, and why? Quetzal says it will be soon enough, when you find out the negative news from herself at the end of May. Billy says what the devil's going on again? Quetzal says I will not explain it to you. Thus, you shouldn't ask for it. Billy says so that's that. Now it's even gone so far that you no longer explain to me the things that lie ahead for myself. Quetzal says you have committed too many wrong, negligent actions and with these, have caused damage, in the fact that you haven't been hard enough with the fallible ones. Billy says of course, you said that. I think it is already getting childish that you say that again. Quetzal says you asked me. Billy says one can also say that in such a way. Quetzal says however, it was so. Billy says as usual, you are right, but remember that I did not terrorize lies. Quetzal says therefore, it is useless for you to be aggressive. Billy says as usual, you are also right in this regard. Quetzal says that is correct, but now, listen to what I have to tell you in other matters because I am still not finished with those determinations that we have encountered concerning you. Billy says only if a lot comes. Quetzal says unfortunately, that cannot be avoided because up to the 4th of October, we can only allow measures that are determined by us and that are deemed by the High Council to be correct. So it applies to you in particular that you have to make and carry out no further decisions in any way. If these are to occur, then we have to devise these and arrange them through you, as I have told you already. From now on, it also applies that the whole group and the board of directors are relieved of the right to undertake any measures in relation to the receiving of core group members or the exclusion of core group members. If anything is to happen to the positive or negative in this connection, then it entirely falls into our determination alone, but always in accordance with the advice of the High Council. Concerning this, we have already set our attention on certain core group members, who linger as chaff in the grain, and who must be excluded in their turn if their behavior doesn't thoroughly change in the foreseeable future and turn to the positive. First and foremost, no consideration at all can be given to those group members who do not adhere to the given provisions of the statutes particularly in terms of regular cooperation in the ongoing construction work in the center as well as the observance of the learning activity for their own change and with regard to their overall employment for the fulfillment of the mission. Especially to be the mentioned here is the core group member S, who speaks forth words of refusal if a duty is laid on her, and she otherwise behaves in a very passive form in regards to any cooperation and fulfillment of the mission. Therefore, you are to incorporate S immediately into all reasonable duties of the entire group, so there is no longer an exception for her, as you hitherto wrongly granted to her. This exception can no longer have validity from now on because our knowledge of her has so matured in the meantime that we realize that a lot of her non-use is basically solely on acting like a parasite, which is in no way acceptable. So you are to incorporate her into everything else and into the tasks that were hitherto unfulfilled by her as these are also owned by the other group members. In addition, I must give you the order relating to this that she is to be excluded from the membership of the core group immediately and without an extension of time, as soon as even one single word of refusal is expressed by her in any form. Billy says and then, I can face the music, of course. I am then the evil rascal. Quetzal says that is probably true because it won't be known for the time being that such orders, as well as all others, lie in our determination and the High Councils. I already told you the reason for this. Furthermore, you also have to act in such a way with the other group members, thus with Ingrid and Ferdinand, for whom no changes in the given rules can be given, so everything must actually be handled in such a way as it was arranged. 
Even for these two group members, the same rules applies for S another group member who can still be complained of, in addition to S, is L, who is unusually careless and isn't joyful in his work, particularly with regard to manual work for the center. His approach is slow too slow, lethargic, and not rapid enough. Concerning this, he has to learn within a useful period of time to work joyfully and profitably, or else his carelessness for work will bring the justification for his exclusion from the core group. Billy says and how long of a deadline do you set for him? Quetzal says the decision comes on the 4th of October. Billy says I think that's fair because until then, he should actually be able to learn to work. Quetzal says that is correct. We want to give him a good opportunity with this time. Billy says and what else? Quetzal says a few things must still be said in general terms, which also refers in particular to individual group members who cause harm, such as B, who affects not only herself but also the other group members through her intensely sensitive and self-pitying thoughts and actions. Also E and K must be mentioned, who leave a lot to be desired in their living together, which must be promptly resolved by them. Also for M, a word must be given because she also exhibits certain deficiencies in the necessary changes with regard to specific matters. But now, what is still to be the mentioned in particular is the order and cleanliness in and around the edifices. Especially in those premises, there is often a deplorable disorder and impurity, which are very evident. Mainly, we discover again and again that especially the food preparation room and the food storage area, as well as the washrooms are unclean and unsanitary. In the food preparation room, thus in the kitchen, there are often things and materials lying around that do not belong in such a place. Even in the food storage area, there is an unusually large and unsanitary mess and uncleanliness which is just as shameful as the filth in the kitchen and the frequent impurities in the washrooms and in the excrement removal rooms. In a similar fashion, it is also to be complained of that beyond the edifices, particularly in front of the main entrance and behind the kitchen and the cellar entrance, a lot of filth and utensils, etc. lie around in such a way that through this, the overall view of the harmony of the center is affected in a bad way. The children are decisively involved in this mess, so they should be advised of this and be encouraged to keep order. Nevertheless, in particular, the adult group members Ingrid and Ferdinand are to be complained of, who, in this connection, also defy the given guidelines of the ordinal rules and statutes, by parking their red, four-wheeled vehicle just wherever it pleases them in each case but they also act against the given order in relation to their baby holding devices because we often find that these devices either stand outside the main entrance or anywhere around the parking lot or on the regular garden seat, in order then to keep the babies in them. This also disturbs the harmony of silence because the children of Ingrid and Ferdinand are unusually pronounced in their crying and screaming which not only painfully disturbs the other group members but also each visitor and us, when we are staying in the center or in its vicinity. This child's shouting is extremely abnormal and causes pain in the ears and in the feeling center. Thus, you should ensure that under all circumstances, Ingrid and Ferdinand finally learn to respect the rules, even with respect to their own lodging, over which there must be order by no later than the 4th of October. Their place, then, is behind the Saha Center, where they can park their motor home and where they can set up their baby holding devices, etc. Until the 4th of October, we can still be lenient with the lodging in Elsie's residential opportunity, but after that, our determination applies. But in the meantime, order has to be created for the other concerns, including the baby holding devices, etc. being set up and moved elsewhere. The rules clearly state that the place at the main entrance is purely a seat for the inhabitants of the center, therefore, it may not be burdened by baby holding devices. At this place, there has to be peace and quiet because the place is a resting place where neither any baby holding device is approved nor any child's shouting is appropriate. Billy says one will say that you are hostile to children. Quetzal says I am not, quite the opposite. 
It's just that some people believe that children shouting in this blatant manner is normal. But in the present form, it isn't. And moreover, screaming babies do not belong in the direct vicinity of adults. Such should be separated, where they can learn to play together and with the mother. A child doesn't learn within the same framework and in the same manner as an adult. The adult mistakenly tries to grasp and to learn everything with the fathomable logic, which is unnatural, while a child learns everything according to natural logic. So if an adult wanted to learn the truth, then he would have to do so as children do. But a child becomes confused if he is to learn from adults by their manner. Billy says that is clear to me. And because the natural logic has become foreign to the adult, he also raises his descendants in the same way. For this reason, children can only learn logically, of course, if they are among their peers, while a mother is practically just a supervisor and a maintenance person when she watches children. Quetzal says that is correct. But now, I have already exceeded my time. I must hurry, for several urgent tasks await me. So I tell you goodbye for about three months, when I come back to retrieve the interim results. Billy says okay, farewell, my friend. Quetzal I don't want to go before I tell you the following it really touches me very deeply that I must impose harsh rules upon you and must bring forward complaints against you because I really feel very deep, friendly feelings toward you. But it cannot be acceptable that you behave incorrectly towards the group members by not being tough enough in enforcing our arrangements for them but always being yielding and always leniently forgiving them of objectionable things and being too lenient with respect to the work performance of the group members and providing them too many concessions. These are the reproaches that we must give you, so they in no way concern your personal work, which you actually carry out in excess and therefore, you allow yourself hardly any rest, which you need very much, nevertheless. But if you don't pay attention to this, then in the long run, it can still happen that your words will be applicable, referring to the fact that you will soon suffer a collapse that will throw you down on the couch. Nevertheless, I am well aware that the whole annoyance with various group members contributes to the fact that your health is damaged more often and that you come closer and closer to a collapse, but you're also really doing this by your tireless manual work and by the night-long writings of the teaching materials, etc., which deplete your health. Therefore, I must advise you that from now on, you take everything a little easier, that you no longer work for so long, and that you abstain from the annoyance of the fallible group members more often. Billy says easier said than done. I can't just lay my hands in my lap or twiddle my thumbs just to enjoy life. Everything pushes me to work because despite everything, the duties and their fulfillment call me constantly. I also know that I've made mistakes in relation to leading the group members, with regard to the strict instructions for their performance of duties, but they must be treated so. Quetzal says I know your problem relating to this, but it is still necessary that you take more rigorous action and, thus, give us no other reason to reprimand you. And our reproaches toward you actually refer to the aforementioned alone because we have no other things to complain of with regard to you. I would like to tell you that in our good friendship. And now, until we meet again, my friend. Billy says thank you for your comments. Dear thanks and until we meet again. The End